Hey, Dark Second. In this video, I'll cover the best new builds for Diana. I'll go over the three builds that I think are currently the strongest. Starting off with the rune pages, we can finally take Conqueror on Diana. And they even change her passive, so her passive now gives her four stacks of Conqueror. And Conqueror just in general is extremely strong, especially on AP Champions actually right now. So we're lucky to be able to take it. For the second row, we like Triumph over Presence of Mind. We actually take tri uh, Presence of Mind, but with a different build, so it depends on which build you're going. But with the row build we'll be going into, we like Triumph. Lacrity is extremely strong. Most of the time we're building Merc Treads. And even if we're not, I still like the attack speed. It's just so strong on Diana. So we always go Alacrity. And then lastly, we take Coop. Just the execute damage, I think, is really valuable. I think execute damage is just is a little is valued a little bit higher. Even though the, the number looks a little bit low, I think the rune is still pretty good. Okay, then for secondary runes, Shield Bash is even better now. You can actually prog it extremely consistently since you have that early gap closer with her, her learning rush being available at level 3. And Shield Bash is just so valuable. It deals extremely high damage and the defensive stats you're going you're receiving are extremely strong. Um so yeah it's one of the best runes you can take. And then second wind just gives you the best sustain in lane. The alternative that a lot of people are probably gonna run is like Taste of Blood, Ravenous Hunter. Ravenous Hunter is a lot better now. It actually is applied on her passive now. Um, so it's a better rune but you still it's still not the best for Dyna. Most of Dyna's damage is dealt at full health with her shield. And the healing starts to you can up later, and that's when Conquer is good. These runes don't help as much. You want that early extra damage plus defensive stats. That will help you more in the in the initial trades. Or in the initial combo. So these are the runes we like. If you're against a champion who really can't proc bone plating well, like Fizz, you can take bone plating. But second wind's always consistent, it's really good. So normally I just take second wind. Then for the runes, you still want the double adaptive. Um, and then what's cool too with Conqueror now, if you have a couple of stacks, you can uh, still 2Q the range creeps at level 5 um, if you have the extra AP. That'll be applied to your Q. So you want the double adaptive. And then lastly, you take MR or armor based on the matchup. If you're not sure, you could take um, the health, but generally armor is then better. Let's see, yeah. Normally I'll take one of these too. The scaling is not as good, especially with her, her early game now. Then we'll transition. So with these runes, the build we like to take. <clears throat> is... No. Is this build. It's our Row Nash build. Still want to start off with Dorn's Ring and like the health is even more efficient. Dinah's W ratio has a health ratio now. And also makes going into a Ruby Crystal right away really good. Ideally the first back happens. Um, before the cannon wave at 750 gold and you can pick up these two items. Ideally make it to Catalyst, that's ideal. That gives you the best laning phase. The reason we still take the things that are more valuable on Dyna now with her new kit are mana and CDR. And health basically, those are things that became a lot more valuable. And so basically row into Nash gives you all of these things. And then it also just gives you like Catalyst is the strongest in lane for consistently trading. If the enemy jungle is playing around, you can survive the landing phase, you can take her ass, you can trade the most, and you have the pushing power, which is Dinah's biggest strength. Her wave manipulation pushing power is still one of her greatest strengths, and so you really want the Roa, and just synergize so well with Nasher's Tooth after that. For boots, we always go defensive boots, um, either Dinja Tabby or Merc Treads, depending on the enemy team comp. And then we'll transition to Nasher's, which is even better now because her attack speed is almost doubled. They cut the ratio in half, um, but the the attack speed's almost doubled. So you're getting this on-hit effect even more frequently. So all on-hit items became a little bit better. And as you'll see later, we have Wit's End, but it's actually not quite as good as we would like it to be, unless they're really heavy AP. I, I found it's always better to still build Spirit Visage before Wit's End. And basically with Conqueror, you can build her as a Bruiser now. Deathcap with her new ratios and her burst um, being a lot lower, and just her ratios being a lot lower, and Conqueror being available. Deathcap is actually no longer her best item. We found Hourglass and Nashers are the, her two most important items, or they're her two best items. With her new ultimate, Stopwatch and Zanyas are extremely powerful, and then with her new passive, Nasher Tooth gives her the most damage. So these are like the two most core items, 
And then the best laning items are going to be Roa, and then we'll get into it later. Um, Proto Belt, but we'll go into why Proto Belt's not that good. And then, so we found, so after you have Roa, Nash, Hourglass, instead of going into Deathcap or Deathcap Void Sap, or like Deathcap Landry's Void Sap, I found it's actually better just to go with tank items most of the time. Something like Thornmail. There's a ton of healing in the game, so Thornmail is extremely valuable. With the heavy AP, you can go Spirit Visage, and then even what's in after that. Or you can go Thornmail into Rainwinds. You can still pick up the Death Cap if you happen to have the good a good gold bias for it. And then last item, maybe pick up the Thornmail. So we found like an actual full Bruiser build. Bruisers are generally built with a couple of damage items into tank items. And so that's actually possible now with Diana. And I found that's the strongest build. That's that will give you the most one to five potential. It's really strong. And so yeah, this is the best build in my opinion right now. Now we'll go back to the the second rune page. If you're looking for a burst gear option, we can still electrocute some more as even better now, since you can actually proc it consistently at level three. And then so electrocute is actually quite good now. We mentioned Ravenous Hunter is better. You have more early game, so eyeball collection you can stack up quicker, it's more viable. Ghost 4 is still extremely strong, though. I'd probably still prefer Ghost 4 actually. But you can't take eyeball. Uh, both these are very good now, actually, they're a lot better than they used to be. Taste of Blood's really good. Sudden Impact's okay. You can take this, you really do want to go burst here. But also, like, Taste of Blood's even more valuable if you want to start Q. Since your W cooldown is so long, you can start Q now. And that makes Taste of Blood a little bit more efficient, too, for the early trades. It's level 1 and 2 trades. And then for the secondary runes, we still want the Shield Bash a second one. They're just going to deal the most damage, the best, give you the most all-in potential. And then I should also mention for Summoner spells, we're taking Ignite and Flash from mid lane. Um, our damage is a lot lower, the Ignite helps a lot, prevents ganks, or yeah, it makes it a little harder to gank if you have that extra damage, so they have to be a little bit more worried about, uh, about ganking you and just gives you more all-in. And she really needs a little bit of extra damage. That's also what I found, so you basically Phase Rush is a lot weaker than I thought because she has a lot less damage. So you actually need a damage keystone. That's why Conquer is the best, and then Electrocute, and then lastly it'll be Grasp. Aftershock is dead, and you don't get the CC until level 6 and long cooldown. So Aftershock is completely dead. But yeah, you can actually take Grasp now, but Electrocute is still the second best option. You could build, take Absolute Focus and No Flying Orb. Um, if you're in an AP matchup and you do want a little bit extra AP. I think Gathering Storm and Transcendence are even worse now with their AP ratios and their strong early game. So you really want the early stats to, to win that level 3 fight or just be strong early. She's no longer, yeah. You really want to actually take advantage of her early game now. So yeah, Transcendence is pretty bad and Gathering Storm is a lot worse than it was. And it was always not even that good. Anything that doesn't apply pre-6 was always not ideal, but Dino was like a, such a late game champion before. That some of these runes were okay, some of these scaling runes. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend them anymore. Still recommend Shield Bash and second one for laning. And they also has great scaling. And so with this build. Go to build number two. So another mana CDR item, and it gives you burst. Luna's Echo is much better than it used to be now. So we'll start Doran's Ring and then you can transition. You can go Dull Doran or even a Dark Seal if it's if it looks like it's a really good game into um into Lunins. Oh, you get the CDR mana burst. And then first and then if you want the full burst, you can go pen boost with this build. And then Death Cap or Hourglass. And that way you're still getting basically Yeah, you're still getting the the, the thing she needs the most right now. And then after that, you have a few options. You can pick up something like Nomicon for the, all the healing that's in the game and also good burst, pen. And then you can finish the this build you want to finish with Void Staff. Banshees could also be good instead of uh, Nomicon or even Lantries, actually. But generally, it rounds out like this. And this build's pretty good. And then here we'll go into build three. These, this build you want to take with uh, Conquer or uh, Electrocute. I still don't think this build is that good. It's a Proto Belt build. This build's pretty good early though. Proto Belt's still an extremely efficient item. You go with Double Dorans and Proto Belt. But the thing with Proto Belt, the stats aren't as good and the active just isn't that good with Diana's combo. But the Hell CDR, it's a little better than it used to be. 
I still think it's probably the best third option. And then you can go any of the boots options into Hourglass, Deathcap, Landry's, Void Staff, Nalancon, or even Lichbane. I think with this build, like a champion like Echo or Fizz just does this playstyle a little bit better still. Then it still has more of that Bruiser playstyle and the Roa or the. and the pushing clearing playstyle. And so Lunin's or a Roa definitely works better for that. We'll go into the last rune option. I can take this rune with the first two builds, or basically any build, but it's specific to certain matchups. But yeah, you can take Grass and then Dying now. If you're against something like Fizz, Kiana, you could take this. I still find the other two options are much better, but it is an option out there. If you're playing top lane Dan, it's also an option. And then for top lane Dan, the first build's the best. You can also, with this build, you can also do Taste of Blood Ravenous. That's not bad. But yeah, those are the main core builds right now. And then we'll go over her jungle builds right now. Her jungle is a lot more viable. And then, so you can go either smite based on the mashup. Like if they have something like Olaf or a lot of assassins, red smite's still pretty good on Diana. The CC is still not that necessary, but then blue smite's also just a little bit better. Like if they have some, just some mages, you want to take that blue smite. And then we still want the, the Nasher's Tooth and then the Hourglass. And then after that, you still have the option. It's like the first build where it's actually a lot of time better just to go into tank after that. You'll have plenty of damage. And this will allow you to, to play out the jungle roll the best. So after you finish the hourglass, you can just pick up Spear Visage, which is really good on the jungle, and then Thorn Mail. You can, however, of course, still go Death Cap and then like Void Staff. Here's some other items that have been brought up but aren't that good. Exit Gunblade, still not that good. 3,400 gold. This item, the champion has to be able to uh, take advantage of the uh, the 80 damage. Has to be a champion with uh, dual scaling like Katarina Akali. Same basically goes for Death Stance. And the other thing, it's not giving her the, the things she needs, right? She wants mana, CDR, AP a lot more. And the price tag is just way too high. Gunblade's really not good, and the healing's not that great. Again, because most of the damage. She's using the full combo with the active on the and using all of her spells right away. And then if you're building this, you don't have the CDR to like keep going after that. So all the healing, you're not really getting much from it. Sex of Gunblade's really not that good. The stance even worse. Rage Lord was fun and we tried it out, but it took too long to stack up. So team fight's really bad and it's push you don't need it. The other build just does it better with Nash. Triforce first. The problem with Triforce, like and like another build that was is gonna be asked about is probably Lich Bane Rush. Sheen Rush is really bad. It's just not that good. All building any of the components, phase, you want to probably do phase uh, first, but it's just not that good. For 3,700 gold, you can already have row completed plus a codex. It's much stronger. Or boots plus row, and that's significantly stronger. Um, Abyssal Mass, 400 more gold. It's still not just not a great item right now. It's not really, it doesn't have the right components for an AP Bruiser. And then, so basically the same problem with Iceborne Gauntlet. Like the first build is too weak. You want like health, mana, CDR, all the other options. Pro Belt and Roa just give you the best, are the, are the best two first item options. And then after that, you want to get the Nasher's Tooth, basically. Another thing with the, the Proto Belt build is Nasher's Tooth's not that good with the active. So it doesn't synergize well with Proto Belt. Synergize, Nasher's synergize is way better with Roa. You can go Lich Bane with Proto Belt, but something like Landry's probably still better. And then Rylai's actually wasn't too bad. So Rylai's is applied on her passive now. Same with uh, Runic Echoes and Ludens, by the way. That also makes these item buys better. That's why we like those builds too. Rylai's wasn't too bad. Like on jungle, you can even go Runic Echoes into Rylai's into Hourglass. And same with uh, Ludens into Rylai's into Hourglass. Actually, wasn't too bad, but so still, or CC, even without her short cooldown and Moonfall, it just isn't that necessary with how Tynan plays a lot of the fights. And then same thing with Frozen Heart, even if you get it later on. Yeah, there's just like not a good window to fit it in. It's not as good. Building Thornmail after you already have the CDR mana and the strong early game pie is just stronger. It's a bad first item and there's better late game options basically. So yeah, I think that just about covers all of the builds. A full example build that we probably like the most right now is just um, Roa with Merc Treads, with Nash's Tooth, with Hourglass, with 
thorn mill and then depending maybe death cap or a spirit visage or if they're heavy AD like randoms and then you take that with uh the first rune page here and i think that's currently the strongest build for dying in the game right now so it's really cool that she can actually be built like a bruiser can still be bur with a lot of burst too with the the loons build and so yeah i think she's in a really great spot oh yeah i should mention too that the build that got hit the hardest was spellbinder deathcap build uh the mana cost more mana and you can't really burst that well with qwe and your passive so it's just not that rewarding and like all of the other the other builds every other build that we mentioned with ult you can kill you can one shot with any or with any build so it doesn't really make sense to go spell by death cap really anymore so yeah i think that just about covers it thank you so much for watching and have fun with me, diana